Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about vector and DAC. Which one should be used? Vector and DAC have very similar interfaces. The biggest difference on, on their interface is a vector can easily grow on one end and a DAC can easily grow on both ends. Other than that, they are very similar. And because of their similarity, people often have difficulty deciding which one to use. Despite their similar interfaces, vector and DAC are actually very different data structures. And because of that difference, often time you will prefer using one over the other. And how to decide which one to use? That is today's topic. First, let's look at an example of vector. We have a vector of int vec which contains 2, 3, 4, 5. And we know that vector has a member function called size, which indicates how many items are already in the vector. And it also has a member function called capacity, which indicates how many total items can be inserted in the vector. And let's run it and see what are these values. As you see, the vec size is 4, and the vec capacity is also 4 which means all the memories are fully used by the vector. Now I want to insert another item of 6 into the vector. I push back 6 and see what's the new size and capacity. As you see, after push back 6, the new size is 5, which makes sense because now the vector contains 5 elements but the new capacity is 8. How did this happen? Let me show you with some pictures. At first, the vector contains 2, 3, 4, 5, and both vec size and capacity are 4, so all the spaces are fully occupied. Now I want to push back another item of 6, but the vector is 4. There's no room for me to insert another item. What can the vector do? It creates a new array which has twice the capacity of the original one and then copy all the data to the new array. Now it can easily insert the new item of 6 into the new array. So now the vector's size is 5 and the vector's capacity is 8. As you see, a vector's capacity grows exponentially. It grows by certain ratio. In this case, this ratio is 2. But it ha doesn't have to be 2. Some implementation use 1.5 as the ratio. Now the vector has a new array which contains all the data. Remember, the new array is a different array from the old array. So what will happen to the old array? The old array will be simply deleted, and its space will be released back to the system. So this is how a vector grows. It involves this process of reallocation. And from this, we can see some drawbacks of a vector. First of all, the expensive reallocation. Every time a reallocation happens, the original data will be copied to a new location, and all the originals will be destroyed. That is a lot of construction and destruction. And secondly, a vector requires contiguous memory. Imagine I already have 10,000 of data in the vector, and when the reallocation happens, I need to allocate 20,000 data of contiguous memory. That could become a big problem, especially when the memory is already heavily fragmented. So this makes a vector exception prone when the vector size is big. Now let's see some more examples of vector. I have created a class dog, and I have a vector of dog vec, which has a size of 6. The result of this is 6 dogs are created with default constructor and filled into the vector. So if we run this program, 
it prints out size equal to 6 and capacity is also 6. Now let me create another example. Example 2. I have a vector of doc vec2 and uh, since vec2 is empty, so vector's capacity is 0 and vector's size is also 0. And then I resize vec2 to 6. This has the same effect as the example 1. In other words, 6 dogs are created with default constructor and filled into the vector vec2. So if we run this program, both vec and vec2 has size of 6 and capacity of 6. Now let me create example 3. We have a vector of dog vec3 and we call vec3.reserve6. What will this do? Let's first run it. As you see, vec 3 size is 0 and capacity becomes 6. So the reserve function increases the capacity of the vector and doesn't increase the size of the vector. So no doc's default constructor will be invoked. This provides a very important function to us. Remember, the expensive reallocation of a vector happens only when the capacity of the vector is full. So if we already have some idea how many items this vector will be holding, we can re reserve that amount of memory for this vector so that we can avoid the expensive reallocation altogether. And that is the next thing I want to talk about, the strategy of minimizing reallocation. If the max number of items that the vector will be using is known, you can always use the function reserve max to reserve that amount of memory space for the vector so that it won't incur any um, overhead of reallocation. However, if that max number of items is not known, but you have some rough idea of when this vector will stop growing, then what we can do is we can reserve as much memory as we can, and once all the data is inserted, trim off the rest of the memory that is unused. Do you remember how to trim off the unused memory for vector? You could use the function shrink to fit for C11. For C03, you could use the swap trick. Now let's look at how the DAC works. DAC looks very similar to a vector, but the underlying implementation is very different. A DAC starts with a fixed size array to hold the data. And when this array is full and there's no more space to push back, it allocates another fixed size array. And similarly, if there's no more space to push front, it also allocates another fixed size array uh, before that array. So this is how a deck grows. It grows in both direction and it grows linearly with a fixed size. It doesn't grow exp exponentially like uh, the vector does. So for DAC, we have following observation. Number one, the DAC has no reallocation. As the DAC grows in both ends, the data of the DAC will never be reallocated because the capacity is full. They stay where they are. So DAC has no function of reserve and capacity because DAC doesn't need them. Secondly, a DAC is generally considered to be slightly slower than a vector. That is because, number one, DAC has a more complex data structure, and all that complexity comes in with a runtime cost. Number two, since the data of a DAC is not sitting in a contiguous mem memory trunk, a DAC will suffer from the problem of locality a deck will incur more p 
page faults or cache misses than a similarly sized vector. However, modern compiler usually will cluster the data of a DAC together so that it will suffer less from the locality problem. That is why a DAC is only slightly slower than a vector. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel so when I post a new video, you will be updated. Or you can go to my channel's homepage and see what I'm offering today. Bye bye.